guys welcome back again to my youtube channel my name is Eunice and if you're seeing this channel for the first time please do well to subscribe to the channel and turn on notification bell to be notified when there is a new video today's video i'm going to be sharing with you guys how i made this imbued corset top it's a shoulder that dress with illusion neckline with some kind of stylish illusion neckline so if this is what you're interested in please stay tuned and watch to the end of this video and if you're still yet to subscribe please hit on the subscribe button and let's get started so guys first of all we're going to start by drafting our pattern so the fabric i'm using is an ankara fabric for the main blouse and then chantilly lace for the illusion for the net part so the chantilly lace is going to be on the sleeve and also on the neckline and also on the shoulder so i got one yard of chantilly lace i got it for three thousand a yard and then i have three yards of ankara fabric here but i'll only be making use of about one and half so then i have my pen and marker and my ruler here so the start of the pattern drafting i'll first of all create a starting line and from that point i'll be taking all my measurements so then the measurements that will be needed in cutting this particular dress you'll be needing your shoulder to full length measurements your half length measurement shoulder to nipple shoulder to under bust your waist measurement bust measurement nipple to nipple shoulder measurement and arm um, psych so all of these measurements will be listed on the description box below so on that starting line which is also my shoulder line i will take half of my shoulder measurement which is eight inches so i'll mark on that point and from that point i will take my arm psych of eight inches so still on the shoulder line i'll take my shoulder to nipple measurement which is 10 inches and my shoulder to under bust of 13 inches then i'll take my half length of 19 inches and my full length is meant to be 25 inches but because of what i have here is 24 inches i'll make use of this and then add the allowance when cutting my main fabric so i'm just going to take the lines all the way through to the end of the pattern paper So on my shoulder line, I came down by one inch from my shoulder slope and then I mark my neck width of three inches. Then after doing that, I went down by 4.5 inches for my neck depth. Then I'm going to connect the neckline together with my curve driller and then connect my shoulder slope. So for the shoulder slope, I'm going to come down with a straight line to meet with my arm o length line. Now I got that arm o length line by removing two inches from my nipple point, which is eight inches. So then after connecting the lines together to draft my arm o curve, I'll divide what I have left in that line there into two. So what I have is 3.5 inches. So then I'll come in by half inch on that 3.5 length. And then on the chest line, I'll take my bust measurement. So I'm just going to label the upper line, shoulder line, chest line, bust point, also known as my shoulder to nipple, under bust, half length, and then full length. So then I'll divide my bust measurements into four, which gives me 9.5. And that's going to be on my chest line. So then after marking that, I'll connect the three points together, the point of my shoulder to meet with the half of the arm side to meet with my post measurement on the chest line as shown. So that is how to draft a hammer curve. If you don't have your ammo curve ruler, you can connect with your hand. So then I'll divide my nipple to nipple measurement into two. My nipple to nipple measurement is seven inches. I divided it into two, give me. 3.5 and i'll take that from my chest line to my full length in a straight line so then i'll go over to the under bust on the side front i'll take 1.5 inch and then on the center front which is the smaller part 
I'll take half inch. Now I'll do the same thing for the half length and then I'll connect the lines together. So after connecting the lines together like so, I'll extend it to my full length in a slant manner. So you make sure that, that point on the half length is not sharp. So then after doing that, I'll connect with my curve driller from the center front under boss to meet with the boss point and I'll do it on the other side as well, just as you see me doing like so. So I'll go over to my shoulder line and I'll divide what I have on my shoulder line into two. And then from that point, I'll be connecting it to meet with my boss point in a straight line. So after doing that, I'll take 1.5 inch on the side part, which is closer to the arm side, and then I'll take half inch on the side closer to the neck part so now connect the lines together with my curve driller as you see me doing like so so the dart that i've been taking on the shoulder is two inches now i'm going to replace the dart by adding the two inches to the side and I'm going to connect to form a new arm psych because when we cut that dart out it's going to reduce the shoulder so then I'll just use my arm curve ruler to form my new arm psych. Now that old arm psych will not be needed anymore. So then after doing that, we're going to be imputing our body measurements. So then I'll take my bust measurement, which is already 9.5 that I added on the chest line. And then I added two inches similar ones for joining. Then on the half length, I'll take my waist measurement into 4, which gives me 7.5. And then I'll replace the dart I took there, which is 2 inches, and then add my 2 inches similar ones. And then on the full length line, I'll take quarter of my hip measurement and then add 2 inches for joining. So I'll connect the similar ones points together. Then at the side of my bust point, I'll take two inches for my bust dart, and then I'll connect that two inches in a straight line slanted towards my nipple point. So this is basically how to draft a shoulder dart bust chair. So before closing down the bust dart, I'll first of all draft the net part at the center front as you see in the picture. So then I'm just going to extend my neckline this is just because i prefer it wider so you can choose to leave it at three inches but i increase mine with half an inch making it 3.5 inches and then my neck width is going to be five inches so then i'm going to connect the lines together now that is going to be my new neckline but if you feel three inches is okay for you you can stick to the before neckline so then you're going to determine how deep you want the illusion net to be just as the picture i'm going to make mine one inch above my underbust which is 12 inches then on the neckline i went in by one inch on the neckline remember that the net is going to be on fold so this pattern is on fold and if you open it up if you're using one inch it's going to be two inches but if you want to make use of 1.5 it's going to be three inches so you just have to determine how wide you want it to be so i just went ahead to connect the line using my free hand as you see me doing like so then i'm just going to blend it well with my curve driller So I'm just going to cut out that new neckline part so you will not be making a mistake. So I'll cut that part out now. Then I'll show you how to cut out the pattern and then how to draft the net part on the shoulder line. We've, not dra we've only drafted the illusion on the neckline. So I'll label that part the net 
so then i'm just going to label the other side of my front pattern center front and the side front so before cutting this is not equal sets but if you want to snatch your waist just as the picture you can take half inch going by half inch on the center front on the half length meaning you'll be snatching your waist by one inch on the front part if you're going in by 0 0.75 into two you'll be snatching your waist by 1.5 inches so i'll make do with half an inch and then i'll connect it to form a dart at that area so then after doing that i'll go ahead to cut out my pattern just watch closely and see how i'll cut out my pattern then before doing that i'm just going to make my full length to be curved i don't want it to be straight so i just came up by one inch and then i'll connect it to form a curve on that full length line so after doing this you can go ahead to cut the front pattern now so i'll go ahead to close my buzz that as you see me doing like so and then i'll secure it with my paper tape then after doing that as you can see at the side part the measurement was now different so i was supposed to cut with an allowance at that part so what i did was to add a little piece of pattern paper and then i'll connect to form my actual measurement then i'll cut out the excess so after closing the dots you can go ahead to cut out the remaining dot at the shoulder line as you see me doing like so so then to draft the illusion part at the shoulder line i'll connect the two panels together and then secure it with my salute tape or paper tape so you decide how deep you want your next part to be now i choose to make mine six inches so then after marking that six inches from that line i cut out on the shoulder line i'll measure 1.5 inch for the wideness and then i'll connect the 1.5 inches to meet with the 6 inches in a slantly curved line and then i'll connect the other side to just watch and you see and understand how i'm doing it so i'm just going to explain again i took 6 inches for the length and then i made 1.5 inches to be the wideness then i connected the 1.5 inch to meet with the 6 inches and then that's how I form the that the illusion nets rather on the shoulder line. So I just had arrows to show the line that will be going towards the arm side area and then arrows to show for the net part. I just hope you understand what I'm saying. So then after doing this, I'm just going to cut it out. Now these arrows are going to help me know which part goes together now the net part on the neck area we're going to be cutting it on fold and then the net on the shoulder line you're cutting it into two for both shoulders and you'll be using our chantilly lace to cut it now when cutting your pattern paper on your fabric you add half inch sewing allowance on the sides and on the shoulder line and on the hem line i've already added sewing allowance on the side part so i'll just go ahead to cut out the net and then you keep them very safe or you can just go ahead to cut it on your chantilly lace so as not to misplace them just keep in mind of the length we use when cutting the net part on the shoulder and also on the neck area so that when you want to sew it you will not have any complications so then i'll go ahead to remove that dart on the half length as you see me doing like so So guys to draft the back i've already drafted my shoulder half of my shoulder line my arm psych my half length and then my full length just as i did at the front but i did not add shoulder to nipple or shoulder to underboss because we'll not be needed that so then i went down by one inch on my shoulder slant and then marked 3.5 inches for my neck width and 1.5 inches for my neck depth so i'm going to connect the neckline with my curve jeweler as shown and then connect from the one inch point to the neckline for my shoulder slants 
and then I'll divide my arm cycle length into two, which is 3.5 inches. Then after marking that, I'll take my bust measurement, quarter of my bust measurement on my chest line. Then I'll connect from that bust measurement to meet with the half of the arm cycle. So I went ahead to label my shoulder, my arm cycle, my half length and my full length. So in this back pattern, I did not make use of a zipper allowance because it's going to be a lacing back. But if you want to add a zipper allowance to your own, to add zip to your dress, then you can go ahead to add one inch zip allowance before drafting your pattern. So then I'll take half of my nipple to nipple measurement for my dart, which is 3.5 inches. And I'll take it from my chest line to my full length in a straight line. And then I'll come to my half length and take half and half inch on both sides of that line to form my dart. So I'll connect the lines together as shown. So then at this point, I'll take my waist measurements divided by four, which is seven and a half. And then I'll remove that dart, which is one inch, then add my two inches seam allowance. Then I'll also add my two inches seam allowance on the chest line. Then on the full length line, I'll take my hip measurements, quarter of my hip measurements plus two inches for my seam allowance. So I'm going to be connecting the lines together. So to snatch the waist at the back, I'll divide what I have on the half length area on the bigger part into two. And then what I have there, I'll just connect it to form a straight line. Now you can do yours like that. So if you connect that line together and you cut it out it will make it to be three panel but i don't want mine to be three panels so i'm just going to leave it like so i will not be cutting that part out so this is just one way to do it so next to get the opening at the back for the lacing i came in by one and a half inch on the chest line and on the full length line i came in by one inch so i'm going to connect both lines together and so then on the chest line, I'll come down by half an inch. Then I'll connect from that point to my arm side. You can place any way you like. There is no particular measurement I use there. So I just connected like so. Because I want half of the yoke parts to be chantilly lace. And then the other part will be the fabric. So this is how my back is going to be like. Now, if you're going to be using that line that I extended at the side part to snatch your waist, then you're just going to cut out that part. But since I said I'm not going to be making my own three panel, I'll show you what to do if you're going to snatch your waist in a different way. So you can go ahead to create your own style for your yoke design. So then after doing that, you label all the parts, label the upper part your yoke, and then the bodies one, two, and three. But like I said, I'm going to make mine just two panels, so it's just one and two. So then to snatch the waist that I said I was going to explain, on the half length line, I came in by half an inch. So then I'm going to connect to meet with my original bust measurement and to meet with my hip measurements, just as you see me doing like so. So then that former line at the side will be cancelled and then this new line I created will be my measurement. So I'll go ahead to cut, just watch closely and see how I'm doing it. But before cutting, I'll be giving the M line a little bit of curve, just like I did at the front part. So then I'll come up by one inch on that M line and then I'll connect to form my curve. So as you can see, I've finished cutting it. This is my two panel and then my yoke for the back part. Now this is how yours should look like if you're going to make it two panel. So then after doing this, I'll go ahead and cut on my fabric, adding sewing allowance at the side, at the upper part and at the down. And then this is for my front part. Now this is how yours should look like after you finish cutting it. So then in our next class, I'll be showing you all how to cut on your fabric and how to stitch it.
to achieve the design that we want to achieve so thank you guys for watching if you're yet to subscribe please support by subscribing to this channel and give this video a thumbs up